Travis Bajan, man. Thanks so much for being here with us, dude, and giving us this interview. Super heavyweight world champion arm wrestler. Yeah. I love hearing that. Could you give us maybe some tips or things that helped you get to where you are, you know, as far as focus and all of that? So I've been asked that question a lot, and I try to focus on three things that will really help your mindset. First is you got to be honest with yourself. Absolutely. You got to know who you are, right? Then we need a detailed plan of action as to how to get where we're going to get, right? You got to work really hard. Everyone knows that. However, you don't have, you can work hard by being smart or you can work hard by putting in a lot of hours. Right. Me, I'm more of an efficient hard worker, right? I'm not going to do 10,000 reps, but I'm going to do 600 perfect ones uh, in a you. perfect gotcha. situation with the same mindset that I'm going to use in the competition. The focus. Exactly. And I'm not going to do, I'm not going to practice halfway. I'm going to set up training sessions where I'm in full attack mode. Um, and then, of course, the last one is you got to live with purpose, right? We all got to chase something, right? Yeah, man. You, what you chase might not be what I chase. Right. My interest is to chase the freaking top peak pinnacle of my sport, right? Right. But other people, you can live with a purpose of winning the Arnold Classic, right? And that's right. completely okay. Your happiness is up to you, right? right? And that's probably the overall main reason you would do everything in life, right? You, you want to you transcend that across anything, whether whether it's your job, whether it's anything, right? I don't like, want to do anything that doesn't make me happy, right? Right. So being the very, very cream of the crop, number one guy is what makes me happy, right? <laughs> That's what makes it. me happy. That's what I want to do. So I. Uh, I'm, I'm super honest with myself. I'm an amazing self-evaluator, both positive and negative, right? I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to myself during the day because I know I can't do it right before I go to sleep. Right. So I'm just gonna be completely honest. My preparation is gonna be outstanding, right? I'm not gonna go at anything without perfect knowledge on what I'm doing. And at the end, I'm gonna pursue something that makes me super happy. You gotta be happy in every, it doesn't matter what you do, man. If you don't love it, you're never gonna put that 100% in, I guess, right? right? We've been hearing that from so many different athletes. The number one thing, it doesn't matter what sport you're in, you gotta love what you do because the dedication that you guys put in, in any sport, but definitely in arm wrestling, a lot of people don't even know it. I didn't even know it until I started researching arm wrestling a little bit myself, learning so much about all the technical aspects of arm wrestling. It's not just about being a massively strong guy, it's about having the technique and, and really putting that time into the training that focus that you're doing on your training. Right? Let me ask you something, as far as like, when you when you reach that pinnacle moment, right? When you got to that point, and can you give me like the, the one big win that you knew that you reached that level of success? And two part question, when you got there, can you remember one thing in your own mindset of your training that you know pushed you over the edge, that made it happen? No problem, so uh, three years ago, my father passed away. Oh man, I'm And he sorry, passed dude. away at, while I was out of town at an arm wrestling tournament. Now. We knew it was gonna happen. It wasn't super close, like we didn't grow up together, but you know, he was an arm wrestler. I wanted to be, I wanted him to be proud of me. So he took this arm wrestling a lot more serious than me, right? So three years ago, I'm already heavily considered the best in the world, but I'm doing it in a, in a lazy way, right? So I'm about to arm wrestle, I get a text message, you know, your dad is whatever. So at that point, I never, I never really knew how that was going to affect me, right? I thought about it, and I knew I probably wouldn't be, uh, you know, happy, of course, but I didn't know the devastation that I was going to feel. So at that moment, ten minutes later, I'm at the, I'm at the table, oh, championship match, right? Wow. And I'm thinking, it's probably, I'm probably not in the perfect mindset to do this, right? So I get up there. They say ready go. I go a couple inches down. The other guy's finger breaks. Snap, All right, this is a bad dude. Boom, straight down, and I remember thinking to myself that someone else was here, right? Making this kind of stuff happen, right? And I, and right then and there, I decided that every day I'm gonna train harder than ever. I'm gonna treat it like he treated it. So I haven't lost in three years since that day. Since and that I've day. won every major arm wrestling tournament once every two months since then. And it's still happening. So to me, that moment that I've really realized that there was 
someone that I cared about a lot more than I knew, and that how happy he would be if I would pursue it the way he wanted me to. Right. And since that day, I, I forgot him. There's nothing about my personal goals. It's all about just honoring him and, and doing it the way that he wanted to. And I'm so blessed that his way is filled with much more happiness than right. the way I was kind of doing it. So to me, that's the moment. What an awesome story, man. I mean, just you feel like you got somebody in your corner all the time with you, right? Every time I arm wrestle, I feel like my man's got the other guy in the headlock. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's getting yeah, easier yeah. and easier. Can you tell me a time to when you lost, like like the one defeat, man, that was like, maybe not crushing, but you know, you took away from that. You're like, man, I'm never doing that again. I know, I got that yeah, story. Yeah, let me hear, let me hear. Yeah. So, I'm trying to make the 220 pound class. It's 19, it's two, 1999. 2000, I'm, uh, what am I, 24 years old? Wow. And I decided to take, you know, arm wrestling can cost a lot of money. Oh, yeah. If you want to try to be the best, you can't just stay at the local fair. Right. You got to travel. So, one of my first events, no sponsor, $500 per weight class. I could pull in six weight classes. I could pull in the 220s, the 242s, and the super. And I planned on going down there, spending about $1,500 to win three grand. So I flew into Louisville, Kentucky, rented a car, drove another hour and a half to the tournament, got there, was a few pounds overweight, struggled to make the weight, finally made it. The tournament's starting to, uh, I can tell they're running behind a little bit, and I've got a flight at 10.30 at night, and it's oh, wow. 2 o'clock, and i got an hour and a half drive back to the airport. So I start the, the I'm finally, already stretched out, dude. finally start the competition. <laughs> the first match in the 220s, I get in a war with this guy. Drains all my energy. Make a long story short, I end up getting third place in the 220s. I don't place in the 242s or the heavies. Wow. And my money maker is my left arm. Wow, okay. And it gets too late for me to even compete left-handed wow. before I gotta get back to the airport. Wow, wow. So I'm, and then I'm in Louisville, and I'm flowing to Atlanta for a layover, and I'm in the airport, and now, you know, it, it, it's obvious that I done wasted $1,350. Right, right, right. And I didn't really didn't You're have You're not getting it. that money back. Of course, yeah, and yeah. it was a, just a monumental fail, right, the whole situation. And I called my wife on the phone, and I said, babe, I'm done with this. What do you mean? What do you mean? This ain't me. Right, like, wow. I'm so disgusted. You're Horrified. ready to give it up, actually? Yeah, whole, of course, right there today. Wow. And the funniest thing happened that night, my plane gets canceled. My, my flight from Atlanta back home. Now I gotta spend the next 17 hours in Atlanta. So I'm there, going around town, and boom, I run into Burt Whitfield, another arm wrestler. Oh, yeah. Spur of the moment. He's like, hey, we're having practice over. And he's like, oh, just come down and check it out. I don't have much to do. So I got back in there right away right. and hung out. I was still fresh as a daisy because right, I didn't right, do right, much right, the day right. before. And uh, I end up meeting Dave Randall and uh, Ron Bath and a bunch of great guys. And by the time I got home, I was back on the saddle. Oh, you and go. Yeah, my wife was like, yeah, well, yeah, I thought yeah, you were yeah. quitting. What yeah. happened? Yeah. And uh, so I remember, like, really, there was a good chance that that fight doesn't get canceled. Yeah. I don't know if I'm retired for a long time, but I definitely <laughs> wasn't really interested in So that maybe, maybe it was some more divine intervention, right? No doubt. Yeah, yeah. maybe Pops was up there. Thanks so much yeah, for, for uh, being with us, man. No we problem. appreciate it. Good luck with everything, man. Thanks.